What's up, LV viewers, and welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. I haven't really said plus before, I probably should have, but hey, it's fine. We're only like halfway into the series, it's fine. I should probably actually get some music on before I continue this intro. So last time we completed the main story of Doki Doki Literature Club, and as I showed previously, there is still a lot more data that we need to collect. And that also comes in the form, not of just the side stories that we'll eventually tackle, but there is a whole separate ending to the main game that we can unlock. Um, but of course, if we try to load the game now, it's not going to be at all responsive, because there's literally nothing in the game directory. So we got to reset it. So we're going to go in the files, and we are going to run this file. Reset.sh. Reset the virtual machine. All modified entities, environments, and data will be reverted to their original state. Basically what we're doing is restoring Doki Doki Literature Club to its former glory without any of the glitching and all that stuff. Should be all good? I think so. We should see all four girls on the main menu, which is something we've not been able to do for a little while. Alright, good. Everything's reset and we shouldn't have any save files. Absolutely not. Awesome. So of course, since we don't have any game to load, I guess we gotta start a new, another new game again. We're gonna do the same name as before, just Rai Guy, and hop into this. We're skipping the first day because literally nothing of note happens on the first day. You, the, nothing, there, there's no player input. You can't really change anything that happens. So we're just skipping by it, and this is where we want to be, the poem mini game. So, there is a specific way we get this ending. Basically, it, it requires a lot of saving and loading, so I'm going to do a very worthwhile save here. We're going to basically go through each girl, spend time with them, unlock all of their um, unique situations, their cutscene graphics. Once we spend all the time we possibly can with a girl, before a game starts getting corrupted, we go back here, and we start appealing to a different girl. It's a little complicated to explain, but I'm sure you'll get the gist of it as we go along. Um, but who we're gonna appeal to first? I think it's finally time we appeal to our girl Sayori. She's been kinda neglected this entire time, and I think it's time she finally gets some of the love she really deserves. But before we do that, I am actually gonna exit Doki Doki and go back to the desktop. In the files, I'm trying to remember where it is. Here it is, poemwords.txt. This, in the file directory, it actually includes a little cheat sheet that tells you which words appeal to which girls, how many points they get. So we could use this as a reference point. I'm going to take a screenshot of that, and we are going to basically use this to help write a perfect poem for Sayori. We could also use it later on for when we're appealing to Natsuki and Yuri, but right now we are strictly a Sayori guy. Okay, so on the side, I have a screenshot of basically all the words that appeal to Sayori, and we are going to use that to help basically write the ideal poem for her. Uh, Bliss? Yeah, this is this is already going well. Lucky? Yeah, Lucky. Alright, we have wrote a perfect poem for Sayori, she's going to love it, and we're going to see how this plays out. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down on the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, you're very close. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? <laughs> you're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? Oh, trust me, I'm getting my fell on anime right now. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that out loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. I'm so interested in what Monica says, or thinks about me, which is interesting based on what we know now. It's true though, yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Hee hee hee. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you, huh? Sayori glances all around at herself. How is it written all over me? You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet, eh? That's super mean. Oh, dear, sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button up her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. 
Oh, okay. He, he, he. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. Don't call her stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this, aren't you? Uh, this is quite the interesting angle. I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? He, he, he. It did when I bought it. Uh, if you ever bunned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. And she says that with an exclamation point. That's so that's just it's like, it means my boobs got bigger again! But it's so stuffy. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Well, she just undid all of our hard work. Thanks a lot, Sayori. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying like that? It's a good thing. If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. You see Sayori, there's a um there's an obvious solution to this dilemma. Just let me be your boyfriend. <laughs> so that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things, eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing, jeez. Well, anyway, just try to focus on waking up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting to bed earlier. Alright, challenge accepted. It's a sacrifice we're willing to make. It's a deal. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. See, they're perfect together. I love this pair, specifically. Sayori and the protagonist, it's, it's, it's a really good pair. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning- Nope, 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 I tried that one time, it it did not go well. I'm not sure if this is mandatory for doing the Sayori route, but I'm actually kind of curious what happens if I do click the Help Me Sayori option in the middle of the fight. Natsuki! Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri, uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of just defenseless here. Sayori! Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? That is a horrible way to put an end to a fight, dude. I mean, Sayori might be touched, but Natsuki and Yuri are gonna be like, okay, and... It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. We're back onto the fight. Excuse me, are you listening to yourself right now? This is exactly why, exactly why nobody likes- Stop! Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems are amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented, so why are we fighting? Be because, well, so Sayori actually- puts an end to it if we pick her. That's grand, instead of actually fixing the fight ourselves, we just pass our responsibilities on to Sayori. What a great friend we are. All right, now we're hanging out with Sayori on day three. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies, what for? Well, you know for how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica, we're gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Oh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Ragai, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. Ah, yes, let's raid the classroom. Sayori starts pulling out various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look at the poster paper. I dropped one by accident. Smack. Are you okay, Sayori? Yeah! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clenches her forehead. Gee, Sayori. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of Sayori's forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, it's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Right, guy. Where would you even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> oh, Sayori, you're so precious. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. Oh, so thoughtful. See, I'm a jerk, but I could be- I'm a thoughtful jerk. Hey, Rai guy, this kind of reminds me of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did, but sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump, and I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Yeah, I, I have no memory. This game started in the middle of high school. I don't remember anything from elementary school or middle. I guess I was always so focused on my games, I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Right, guy. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Aw, thanks, Sayori. Don't call me that, though. <laughs> and I really didn't do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. See? 
it's, it's a great couple idea. Sayori and the main character, it fits so well and perfectly. Ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about to get ready with starting our poems. Uh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. She's... She's a positive person, what can I say? I made it an adventure. You sure did, Sayori. Yeah, that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone, are you ready to share your poems? We're gonna skip through this again, because while there are dialogue changes based on how the different club members like our poems, in the grand scheme of things, they don't matter too much, and come on, they have a time limit on these videos. I don't really want to go over, like, 25 minutes or something, so we gotta keep the flow going. Pretty sure we also have to select this option, the stay on the Sayori route. We gotta walk home with her, and that's definitely something I agree we should do. Um, however, when we are playing around later, I am gonna try the Yuri route. Actually, the more I think about it, it doesn't make much sense why she would ask us if we would walk home with Yuri when she's the one we're spending the most time in the club with. Monica, I can maybe understand, but god forbid Monica be an option in this game. So I share with Sayori, this is your best one so far, it's really nice, right, guy? Or thanks. Mm -hmm. But, Sayori, you've been a little quiet today, is everything alright? Of course, everything is fine, maybe I'm just a little tired today. And this is where she still goes home early, I think? Um, still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. She's so, like, convinced that I like Yuri, even though I honestly don't, or even Atsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get close with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. Oh. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know that you've had to put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you, but we have a wavelength or something. This is how my poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life, so sometimes it's just easier to write them thinking about you. Sayori, no, right guy. Oh, wait, this may. This is worse, actually. Wait, no, don't cry. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steadily all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. It's nothing, right, guy. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry to see that. Ha ha ha. Oh, yeah. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Oh, man, no. I told Monica I wasn't feeling well. Yep, and... So nothing, nothing we do, she still, she still ends up this way, and, and it's, it's really sad, man. We actually get to read Natsuki's third poem this time around, because if we appeal to Yuri, she immediately knows what we're trying to do, but if we appeal to Sayori, um, we're able to actually unlock Natsuki's third poem, which is awesome. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go to. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with your brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about every day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand, wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons that you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about every day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. That's a really nice poem, actually. This is that's definitely my favorite Natsuki poem. I mean, it was competing with this, so I mean, we have a clear winner. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to do a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. It is awesome. I don't get to go to the beach, sadly, much, but it's a great place. So what if we choose to spend the weekend with Sayori? I mean, if it's gonna be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No, no, no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be so difficult. Just think of the club, okay? Ah, uh, so yeah, Sayori's not an option, and I don't imagine Monica's an option. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yeah, you picked me. Hold on for a second. Yeah, Monica, you're the one who needs to least help out of all of us. Eh, but I agree with Natsuki. Oh, yeah, this is pretty much carried over from Act 2 a little bit. But Ragai was the one who, uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. So are you gonna do the right thing, president? Okay, okay, I get it. It's technically most logical for Raigai to help one of you two. I guess that's what we'll do. And of course, the final thing we have to do in the Sayori route, we have to tell her how we feel. We have to confess our love. We have to... Get this final character graphic, and we can move on to another route. 
So let me save that, because I've been saving them all, um, just as I've been collecting them, just so I can guarantee when I'm at the end of this that I do have every single one of them. So now that we have that saved, um, we're actually going to load our game and go back to this point. We're back here, we've only done the first day in this file, and now we're going to be appealing to Netsuki. And she likes cute words, and those are much easier to figure out than your, than Sayori, so I'm not sure if I'm going to need the guide. So in Act 2, we kind of already did a bit of this moment with Netsuki, so I am going to skip over this one a bit more. Where She says freaking Monica, so that's what the original line was meant to be, but of course... It was altered to, well, you, if you watched part four, you'd know. It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly the next day. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull out the first volume, a part five goes out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get you the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Eh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up at the top shelf. Did you move my manga up again? Ah, uh -huh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet, so I had to move some stuff around and clean up a bit. It's still all there, I just had to organize it a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out if she could reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient. I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? There's no way you'll be able to get to the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I could do it. I don't want your help, okay? So I... I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Aha, there we go. See, I could easily do it now. Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down and puts it on the shelf below. What? The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it who told me to not help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I can... I can almost see up her skirt. No, dude, don't be a pervert. I don't think I could bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one. Eh. But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Alright. Let me just stand up. I slowly realize my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh. Oh no, Natsuki looks like she's realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki the box. What are you looking at? Uh, you're trying to look at my- my- Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not, I was just- Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You- you purr- Yeah, I deserve that. You set me up. Go away. Get out. But I'll do it myself. Ah, uh, the chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki, yeah! The scene turns into chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Oh dear. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you. Crash. <laughs> The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight onto my chest. Hey, so this is Raigai from the future telling you that since recording this process took way longer than expected, it's being split up into two videos. Don't worry, I can confirm that the second half, which also doubles as the final part of Doki Doki Literature Club's base game, will release this Friday, July 30th. That's just three days away if you're watching this on the day the video airs. But regardless, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.